what I'm doing right here now, I want y'all to look at those beds. See how you can see a ring. It looks like a tire. That's what their beds looks like. Right in the black spot. I'm, I'm throwing in each and every individual black spot where you can't see the, the ring in hopes there's a fish in it. These are late spawners. But look how big I can't get over it. These are just late spawners. That's all they are. A couple of days ago, they would have been thick, super thick on them beds. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Look how I want y'all to look right here. How clear that water is. It's remarkably clear. And I seen a little bass right there, a little bitty bass. And right here... If I can see them. See, I done been out here looking at this lake. So, um, I geared up just about exactly right, right here. And I'll show you what I'm going to be using. See that? If y'all can see that fish right there, that's a catfish. That's a channel cat. And there's another one right there. Now, what they're doing is bedding. These, them, them two fish right there would be very, very difficult to catch. I might try it a little bit later this evening to catch one of them, but uh, they'd be very difficult to catch. Now, what I'm going to use in water this clear is 100% fluorocarbon line. This is four-pound test fluorocarbon line. Uh, forget about the braid and all that stuff. And water this clear... No matter if you're fishing for bass or bluegill or shell cracker or whatever, the fluorocarbon line is going to be the best deal. That's going to be high percentage. There's the third one right there. There's three of them. One, two, three. Three channel cats. Let's look down there. Can y'all see him? He might hit a red worm later on this evening. But what I'm going to focus on is some of these big bluegill. Now, what I'm using also is a size 8 hook, Ozark trail hook, with the Walmart type, and a little bitty split shot, a light action rod. This is a cell, sow belly rod, six and a half feet long, and a Daiwa Reverus LT1000. And I'm going to be using Walmart red worms. Now, these are just... 30 count. There's supposed to be 30 big red wigglers, red worms in here, and we'll see what they look like. Boy, I'd like to hook one of them catfish. But when they're on bed like that, they're difficult to catch. Yeah. I believe I can put just one on here. I'm just going to hook him like that right there. That's it. I'm just going to spot around. I see a point right over there that looks inviting. There could be a lot of fish over there. Points is something I work with a lot, especially on big lakes. My, my, my. I see some bluegill beds right here in front of here. There's a couple of little bass, if y'all can see that. One right there. And there was one right over there. There's a big one. Let's flip it right there. That's a big one. Big bluegill. He looked at it and turned away from it. There comes one. He's got it. Got him. They ain't nothing to this. As far as technique, well, they ain't nothing to it. It's all about just catching them. Because the fish is out there to catch. This is a good one. Golly. Look at there. That's a good one. Y'all, excuse me. I'm going to let him go. I don't want him to get back on that nest. They'll get weary. They'll get hard to catch if I do that. Which direction? 
See, he's going straight out. He's disoriented. He's not going to go back to the bed. He'll finally, eventually find his way, I imagine. But it's going to be a while. You can pick them off like that. Because they do get smart, especially in this clear water. All I got right here is just a red worm, folks. That's it. Let me adjust that split shot. I want it about like that, about a foot above it. Now I'm going to watch for that tick on my line. I'm a line watcher. There he is. Golly, bomb. That's a big one. That may be the biggest one right here. That's a big one. This fish is giving me a fit. Oh my goodness. I want y'all to look what one right here. Now he was way out in yonder. For their size, a bluegill or a shell cracker, either one of the hardest pulling fish they are in fresh water, in my opinion. Okay, let's see what we got right here. Golly, this one's got a little bit of shell cracker in him. See what I mean? That's a bluegill and shell cracker mixed. The reason why I know, see that little bit of orange right here on this, on this gill flap, a perculum gill flap. That's a big one. <laughs> I'm so proud of this. Oh, me. Let's let him go. Look at there, what a beast swimming off. Golly, I bet this lake is absolutely full of them. There's a little bass, two little. <gasps> hey, there's a big bass. Look here. Look at that big bass. Hit that worm right here. Look at that. He's after that bluegill. Doggone you. That makes me want to catch a little bluegill. Oh, boy. Let me throw that out there. Maybe he'll hit them red worms. Daggone it. That was about a four or five pound bass. That's probably all they have right here to eat is bluegill. Now that tore me up, folks. Tell you what, little fella, you better stay away from that point right there because you'll get eat. I have a lot of good memories. Bluegill and shellcracker is what caused me to be the way I am right now. When I was a kid, my daddy put me on a bluegill and shellcracker bed with a cane pole. Lake Okeechobee, I'll never forget it. And uh, I've been hooked on fishing ever since, fascinated with them, with fishing. And uh, I've studied fishing ever since that age all the way up to now. Different species. They, they're, it's just fascinating. Let's catch another one. Let me quit. Whoa. I'm going to holler, but now there's people up in there. And I'm going to hit you right now. You're going to hit you right now. And then you get my show. Did you get my show? Now, that's how I hook them. I don't ball them up in a little bitty ball. I like them. Look at it in water. See how natural and see how much wiggle that worm has got. I want that. All right, let's cast way out yonder where we caught that other one. There he is. Golly, bum. These are mules, folks. I need to quit saying that, but it's been a many a year. Now, this one is the biggest one, I believe. Yeah, this one's huge. This is a huge fish. I don't know if I need to flip him or not. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to try to flip him. God. White bomb. <laughs> Whew. That is a big one right there. That is a true blue big one. Now, 
I'm thinking shell cracker, shell cracker. They should be a full-blooded big old shell cracker out there with them, shouldn't they, folks? Look at him. Gone. Whoa. I want to holler, but there's some people. Look, There's some people right there in that Mountaineer edition. I seen them looking at me. Out the window. <laughs> he fell in the water. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it was. Look here, what a fish. That is a big joker right there. And colored up. Golly, look how pretty that fish is. Colored up. Huge. And I don't see none. The thing of it is, even with these glasses, I don't see any swimming around at all. It's about four days after the last full moon. So these are just a few fish. Mm. Golly, come back here. These, that fish there's got a lot of shell cracker in him too, folks. That's a shell cracker, bluegill hybrid. See the patterns right here? But I hadn't caught a full-blooded, full-blown um, shell cracker. I'm amazed. Now, probably what happened, the beds are, are deeper. I probably went and walked by a bunch of beds that I couldn't see. When water's this clear, they, they can bed in eight or nine feet of water. That's a pretty specimen right there. And his tail is split. And I don't know why. He didn't jump my line or anything. That was already there. Let's let him go. But he's got a lot of shell cracker in him. A red bread, red ear sunfish, excuse me folks. We call them shell cracker here in the south. They eat a lot of snails and stuff and crack them. What do you mean, well? All right, I'm going to go back over there and we're going to catch another. They ain't nothing like bluegill and shell cracker fishing. Or just pan fish in general. I love it. Let's make that long cast out there again. There's some fish out there and a lot of them, folks. There's a fish. There we go. That fish wasn't on, on this bed. What I've done right here is I, let's get him in, I'll explain this. That's a good one. What I've done is, this is shallow back here, right? Just a little flat, then it dumps off deep. What I done is right there at the end of the beds where I can see the last of the holes, it dumps off into deeper water. So what I done is made a long cast out there in the deeper water, hoping there was some fish relating to that little drop. And, and we caught this one, okay. So that's probably where the majority of the fish are. We'll try that again, let's let that fish go. That was a big one. Here's the cast I made. Way out there like that. And it's deep. It's, it's taking it a long time to hit the bottom. I'm going to say it's at least 12 feet right there. Just guessing. 10 to 12 feet. There we go. That's a big one. That's going to be my last one right here. I've had too much fun this evening. I've had way too much fun. <laughs> All right, bull gill. Going back in, yonder. See, he's heading straight back out to that deep point from where he came from. 
What a blessed day to be on the water. Or a couple hours. I tell you what, the rain is coming. There ain't no doubt. And I can't quit looking for beds. Mm -mm -mm. I got it bad. It's called fish brain. Well, folks, that was simply a lot of fun. I want to give a special thank you to Matt Reeves for inviting me to come out here and fish. It's been a long time since I caught bluegill that big. It's been a lot of years. They just don't exist too much around this area much anymore. And um, I want to thank y'all for everything y'all have done for this channel. I have the best subscribers on YouTube, hands down. There's no doubt about that. And I love each and every one of y'all, and God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey. Oh my goodness, no. And remember, go fishing when you can, don't call this the food.